Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop. And uh, George and I are going to be happy to welcome one of our favorite guys, J.S. Gilbert tonight. Say hi, J.S. Hi, hi, J.S. I knew you was going to say that. Anyway, uh, if you've got questions for JS or for George and I, or, you know, anything else you want to ask, you can ask in the Facebook chat room. You can ask in the chat room in uh, YouTube and uh, we're live on clubhouse uh, also with uh, Danny Burnside. And if you've got a question there, raise your hand, just keep it brief. <laughs> anyway, lots of fun stuff tonight on voiceover body shop coming up right now from the outer reaches they came bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio and together from the center of the vo universe they bring it to you now george widom the engineer to the vo stars a virginia tech grad with the skills to build set up and maintain the professional vo studios of the biggest names in vo today and you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to Voiceover Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, JMC Demos, when quality matters, and VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hello there, everyone around the world watching our show. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is voiceover. Body shop. Or VO. BS. Anyway. Mr. Whittem, hello. Hi, I think there's a little more latency tonight than normal, so it yeah. should be a little extra entertaining. I think you need to give yourself a little bit more gain there, or I'm just listening to myself too loud. But anyway. I can juice it up. How about that? Are we loud enough now, everybody? Hey. I, I think that works. I think that works. Anyway, we're here to talk about the voiceover business and home studios and all those sorts of things. And we got a great guest coming up in a, just a couple of minutes. Uh, but first, George and I have to promote the stuff that we do, which is webinars. I got a big webinar coming up Thursday night with voiceover extra on processing. And we're going to have a special guest at that one. Oh, that's you, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. We haven't done a webinar in, in any capacity together and well, years. I don't know. I don't remember. I mean, we do one every week, but it's, you know, not, <laughs> it's true. It's a free one. It's yeah, that's right. So <laughs> we do a free <laughs> webinar every week. That's right. And you guys have benefited from it. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're not going to be on. This is actually going to be the last show we do where we're all apart. You know, last 15 months, we have been like, you know, remotely jerry rigging. This thing has been put together with chewing gum and bailing wire uh, literally for the last 15 months. And we're going to come back and do the show back in my Sherman Oak studio. And it'll be good because we can all breathe on each other again which sometimes is good sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I'm anticipating. <laughs> but uh, no, we're going to be off most of July. Uh, well, Marcy and I are going to be taking a Viking cruise around Iceland. You know, so we have to, it's going to involve a little bit of rowing, but you know, I want to see the, the live volcano in Iceland. It's, I've been watching the YouTube videos. It's spectacular. You can see the, the lava shooting out of this volcano from Reykjavik. It's, you know, shooting a thousand feet into the air. And there's people sitting there going, wow, you know, little rocks are falling all over them. And <laughs> like maybe we should move away a little bit. Check Burning it out. Little holes in their flesh. Yeah. Check out Live Volcano on YouTube. It's, it's actually pretty cool. 
Anyway, we've got a great guest tonight. Uh, we want to talk about uh, social media and, and various other things that uh, our guest likes to talk about, which is just about everything. Uh, joining us from South San Francisco is our great friend J.S. Gilbert, who is voice actor, writer, you know, advertising guy, director, oh, producer. J.S. Gilbert. How are you doing today? And Welcome he's a sit-down comedian. A song for VOBS. It That's goes right. something like, I'm going to lay you down, sweet woman. I make love to your body. I'm going to fill you with desire and lay you down by the fire. Oh, I hope that clears everything up, children. <laughs> <laughs> I think that brings it all to a, a screeching halt. Anyway, welcome back to the show. I, love Chef. Chef. I miss Chef. We all miss Chef. Totally. That was yeah. my homage to Chef. I, I, I don't professionally do the Chef voice. It's politically incorrect. But yeah. Well, that was that too. was what's his name who did that the uh, soul singer what, what the, who is the man that yeah. would risk his neck for the, the, man? the black Moses of soul uh, and we're all not remembering his name right now I know uh, but which, his his son or his grandson I'm trying to remember which one has been on Clubhouse actually really yeah I think he's an investor. There's a lot of celebs that go on Clubhouse. Oh, yeah. no doubt. Not that I endorse Clubhouse, but you can find me there on occasion doing absolutely nothing of import. What's ah. your favorite thing about Clubhouse? My favorite thing about Clubhouse? Uh, that I have a lot of friends all over the place, and so we just talk. It's I don't really go in there to like... Uh, show people how brilliant I am or for them to show me how brilliant they are. I just think as a conversation place to get together with people. Like for example, if you've got a group of maybe, you know, a clutch, you're, you've got a voiceover clutch, uh, then make a private room and meet in there on a regular basis to go over stuff. It's uh, Isaac Hayes. Thank you. Isaac there we Hayes, go. Yeah. Isaac Hayes. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Isaac Hayes. The third is you can, you can look him up on Clubhouse. He's on there, and you can follow him. Um, <laughs> Even though he's been I dead for a while. I tried to be a speaker in the room that he was in just so I could do an impersonation of his dad for him. But yeah. Anyway. anyway, welcome to the and show, uh, J.S. It's been a while. Thank you. It for has been a while. I don't, I, I don't think you've been on the show since we've been out in California, actually. Mm, Maybe once. Yeah. No, oh, well. Uh, since you've been out in California, maybe not, yeah. maybe but not. Seven years ago, you were on the show. Then it would have been when I was still in Buffalo. <laughs> you were on the show seven years ago. Five, five, seven years, seven years. And I'm yeah. still telling people the same thing today that I told them seven years ago and that I told them 30 years ago. Which was? Uh, if you want to make money in voiceover, get a job as a welder. <laughs> I usually tell them to go to law school, but yeah. Either way, anyway, it's much, over here, uh, just so people know, the building trades, at least in my back, they are paying for people to go to school and then guaranteeing them work afterwards. Because the average age of like people in the trades here is like 51 or 52. Whoa, uh, we need, we need more trades people training. <laughs> people on, so. Yeah, really. But why do I say that? I don't say that to dissuade people from getting into voiceover. I just suggest that maybe it's a good idea for however long, it could be quite a while, to have a good way to pay your rent and your bills and stuff like that. That's all. It's not that I don't care about people or I you know, don't want the competition or whatever the hell else people are saying. It's just I, I think that there's a smart way of getting into business which also involves getting professionals to help you. Uh, you know, people that are looking over contracts and signing them without having lawyers or other people to guide them, uh, people who still think that agents aren't really necessary, they certainly have their place and maybe there's spots, but, you know, hire professional people, which gets me to the first thing that I'm going to say, and, and Dan and George don't know this, but... Um, so I, I still get uh, hired occasionally, although not much during the pandemic, obviously, but 
uh, to direct sessions and do things with, uh, with, with other actors. And often, these are untrained people. These are people who are uh, the nephew of the owner of the company or somebody who works for the ad agency or whatever it is. And they bring me on because if it goes awry, they can throw me under the bus. It's no big deal. Uh, the deal is, is you can fix just about any kind of a performance. But if you have bad audio, you can't fix bad audio. Uh, it, it just it doesn't work. There are plugins or things like that. But what I'm getting to is there are a lot of people out there that are booking jobs because they have a well-treated room, acoustics and soundproofing. They have an appropriate microphone. They have a good chain. They know how to create audio that sounds good, that doesn't have all kinds of fuzziness and crappiness or whatever. And if that's the case, as a director, I often am dealt these people and I'm told, if you can't get them to do what you want them to do for 30 seconds, you've got a problem, JS, because that's your job. So um, it's one of the reasons why I like dealing with professional studios, because it's one more thing I don't have to deal with. But that kind of has gone heavily by the wayside. Um, we are really seeing more and more of this stuff being done online. The auditions are all asking for the paid version of uh, Source, Source Connect, Connect and things yeah. like that. So, um, and uh, I know Dan and George for a long time, and I know uh, that they are a very sincere people when it comes to trying to find affordable ways that make sense for people's audio to sound good. So I'm getting that out of the way now because uh, <laughs> I'm not into like endorsements or commercials or anything like that. They were kind enough to have me on here. I don't do a lot of shows because I don't respect a lot of the people who do these things. I respect these guys, and that's what they do. Um, now, if you want to hire like a good voiceover, uh, you can hire me. If you want to hire somebody that does voiceover, you can hire Dan. Uh, <laughs> we're so glad we had you on. All right, well, yeah. that was fun. Have a good and, night, JS. I'm kidding. Anyway, that's... Uh, that's uh, uh, enough for the uh, the infomercial. Yeah, but well, if you act before midnight tonight. Yeah, well, I mean uh, the, the the point is is you know that, that what you're saying is we we have been preaching all along that you know every the idea of a home voiceover studio is not to make you sound great, it's to make you sound like you as you exist, and then they've added in this broadcast quality thing that nobody knows what the hell they're talking about, which I I have addendum to my my thoughts as to. It doesn't sound bad. Right. You know, and, what, and, there, are what, and problems. I get that. there are problems that I've discovered, which is most people's voice booths. We'll talk a little tech for a minute because we love that, don't we? Is that go okay? Uh, sure. Okay. Oh, I should go to comments. There's like 16 comments. I'll well, don't worry about that. We'll, we'll cover the comments. Yeah. We'll, <laughs> right. we'll, we'll but, uh, ones. Most people have uh, voice booths that are four by four by seven or four by four by eight, and the walls are perpendicular, per parallel, no, what, per perpendicular, parallel, perpendicular, right perpendicular. angles. Yeah. Um, so the only choice that one really has in these booths is to create what's called dead quiet, where pretty much everything just gets absorbed, and there are no standing waves bouncing around. When you are in professional studios. They measure these things. The walls are put at, at angles to one another to control certain sounds. And professional studios, you go in them, and it sounds more lively. There's a life in it. So uh, that's another uh, thing that uh, you, you need to endeavor is um, trying to have a little spot of uh, something soft in your booth or uh, something hard, I should say, reflective, as opposed to having all the bass traps and everything like that. Or coming out of the booth and realizing maybe you have to turn down the bass a little bit if you DB. But those are all things uh, George and Dan can help you with. And George creates uh, stacks for people in their favorite software where it's not really cheating. It's not doing the things that audio engineers don't want you to do, like applying heavy compression and things like that. It's stuff to counteract the fact that most of us 
in a booth environment. It is not normal. And so you're you're going to sound boxy because you're recording in a box. Is that about right, George? Yeah, yeah that's about right. The, the key <laughs> to getting rid of the boxiness is to take away the box shape. I like to right. do it with giant corner bass traps personally, but, yeah. you know. Well, yeah. there's, there's lots of ways that you can approach it. You can deal mm-hmm. with it. So. Anyway. Yeah. Right. Don't worry. I mean, people get, I mean, I, I get the non-parallel walls. I think people get caught up into that as being a really big thing for really small spaces. And the problem in really small spaces is small spaces have just, they resonate based on their volume. Yeah. So even if the walls are all splayed at weird, at weird angles and whatever, it's still a volumetric space. It's a container and it's going to ring at specific frequencies, no matter how many angles there are in that thing. So, you know, I, th- I think uh, don't, uh, if you're taking this as gospel, don't overthink it. Start simple. A rectangle yeah. is usually your best bet. It's more predictable in terms of how to treat it and how to fix it. Um, and that's what I, I usually recommend. So. I, I think the point here is as a guy who's been doing this for 30 plus years, who I was doing this long before there was any idea of doing a home studio. In fact, when I got into this, uh, we were just transitioning from reel-to-reel demo tapes to cassette. So my first demo was on a cassette tape. Like, like that and or a cassette that cassette? And that, which brings me to another thing, which is you should only listen to what guys who have been doing this or gals who have been doing this for 25 to 30 years take what we have to say with a big grain of salt because um, – <laughs> realistically i get people all the time hey js how do i get work in voiceover well you have to understand that when i was at that point where i was asking the how do i get work in voiceover question there was no internet there was in fact we barely had automobiles back then it was was we used to have to crawl six miles through broken glass uphill just to do a vo session it was it was horrific but yeah. we were glad to do it it's yeah. uh, it's funny, but and 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 again, when I talk about performance, back when I started, I was one of a few people who didn't have uh, dreams of being in a TV show or or a movie or something like that. I wasn't really an actor. I did have a background doing stand-up comedy and an improv, but uh, almost everybody getting into voiceover, uh, it was part of what you did as acting. Voiceover really wasn't its own field. It really, now, of course, it is. There are plenty of people that make a ton of money doing it. But back then, just um, really only a handful of people that I knew that were uh, getting into voiceover that didn't have acting training. Yeah. If you're just joining us, where have you been? We've got J.S. Gilbert with us tonight. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about social media and uh, how you get yourself going in the voiceover business today, as opposed to 2003. Uh, and if you've got a question, you can throw it in the chat room in Facebook. You can throw it in the chat room in YouTube. Or if you're on Clubhouse, uh, you can ask your question live in just a little bit. So raise your hand and let Danny Burnside know that uh, you have a question for JS. Anyway, uh, this is VoiceOver Body Shop. And back to JS here. So uh, let, let's talk a little bit about you know some of the people who are influencers today. Because there is a lot of... You know, we'll call it information out there about voiceover and mm-hmm. uh, which I, I think all three of us are like, there is an awful lot of misinformation out there. And, and then you've got people like you say, who have been in the business a long time, but perhaps are not as technologically social media savvy as say people who have gotten into the business in the last five to eight years. What are, what are your thoughts on that? Well, my thoughts in the beginning when I used to go up to people and they would ask me about voiceover and I would say, you know what, find somebody and offer, if you don't have the money, which a lot of people didn't have, uh, be creative, offer to wash their car, clean their apartment, uh, do something, find somebody that you respect and uh, make them their, your mentor, whether they want it or not. I've had it done to me. Um, you know, uh, I uh, I haven't been able to drive an automobile for a while. It's hard to tell looking at me, but I have a problem. Both my hips have been replaced, and I 
I have a problem with my uh, spine. And, uh, oh, people used to offer to uh, drive me back home from uh, uh, voiceover gigs and, um, you know, other actors. Or, or even I talked for a little while, although I hate to say that because I, I, I prefer to tell people I play piano in a brothel than to say that I actually <laughs> talk voice acting. But, um, it, and, and that's just me. It's just, it's, it's a thing with me. I have to deal with it, but, um, uh, so people would like, you know, they, they want to give you a ride so you could give them advice. Yeah. Give them advice or pick my brain or whatever. Um, or creative ways that people would get my, my, uh, my email address or my phone number. Of course, now all you have to do is just Google me online. My email address and phone number are everywhere. Um, and if you called me and said, and I actually didn't screen your call, uh, but if you sent me an email and you said, hi, I'm not one of those people that's out there to pick your brain for nothing, but um, uh, I know of something that might be of interest to you, or I made this chocolate chip cookie for you, or whatever the hell it might be. And so I think the first thing that I would tell anybody uh, that wants to make it in voiceover, it's like anything else in the world, be of service. Being of service is singularly the best thing that you can do for your heart, your brain, for another person, for yourself, for everything else. I made a point when I first got into this business of being of service to as many people as I could in the, the advertising industry. Whatever I could do, what, however I could help them, whatever was going on, um, I used to bring things sometimes to sessions, food, things like that, whatever. Um, you know, be of service because most people out there are looking to get. And if yep. you approach the situation with whatever it is that you have to give and do not downplay what it is you have to give, there's something you have to give. Somebody wrote me a poem as payment. I didn't request payment, but... Somebody wrote me a poem 20 years ago. I still have it hanging downstairs by my computer there. Um, and these are the things that uh, life is all about. It's touch points. Otherwise, yeah. just friggin' work, right? Yeah. We get to be with people that we like most of the time. We get to do work that we like most of the time. But why I say most of the time? Because it is work. And don't forget, somebody's paying us. So... Uh, you know, did I make my mistakes? I think the first time I was in the booth, I tried to show off, you know, look at all the things I can do. Look at me. Look at me. And then you quickly learn um, when you're out there, whether somebody's calling into your booth or you're in a professional studio. Guess what? The guy that did his job so fast that they got to actually have a decent lunch. That's the guy they like. That's the one they remember. So. Absolutely. You know, yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's take the, the impetus off yourself. There's no ego in this. Uh, same, whether you're doing a commercial, you're not the star of the commercial. Your voice is not the star of the commercial. There's a product out there, and it works like this. Usually, it's always the same thing. AIDA, attention, interest, desire, and action. And the action is not for you to come up with something that's going to be so good you're going to want to put it on your audio reel. That's not the action. No, the action is, is that that commercial is going to do a call to action. It's going to make people do something, whether that's buy a product or go to a website or look for something or whatever. But it's not about you. And there's a reason why they hired you. And often, most often, I ask them, I say, why is it that you hired me? So I know how I can approach the job. Yeah. You sounded, exactly. you sounded trustworthy. One time I did a script where it says, uh, we're here at the North Pole to prove a point. And I asked them, I said, why did you hire me? And they said, because you were the only guy who both was able to sound like you were at the North Pole, but also wasn't uh, terribly hard to listen to, because that's what they wanted. Yeah. They wanted to sound like you're at the North Pole and also be able to deliver the copy points. Yeah. But one of the things that, you know, I, I always tell people is guess what? This is not show business per se. This is, this is an entrepreneurial yeah. business. 
And you've got to be able to act in, in those sorts of things. And that's really important. But you, you can't approach it like I'm going to be a star, because as you said, you know, you're not the star of the commercial. You're part of the commercial or, or something along those lines. You got to look for the brilliance in the copy. And right. it and there are some times when I've struggled to find the brilliance in the copy, struggled long and hard. And if you're walking away from looking at a piece of copy that you have to audition for, and you're saying to yourself, who writes this crap? You're very <laughs> rarely going to book it. But you have to think about it. You say, how did it get this far? There's got to yeah. be something I'm missing. Yeah. And that's what your job is. And it's yep. it's not always easy. And anyway, it. Yeah. Is, is, course, the, is the irony the the better you get paid, uh, the bigger the job, the better the writing, the easier it oh, is? Oh, yeah. Most of the time. Yeah. So, but getting back to your question about this. So, you know, having done this for over 30 years, and I can also tell you a lot of the people I know I'm personally friends with that have done this 25, 30, 35 years. Um, we have good stories. We have lots of interesting stories. I have a story about how I, um, uh, uh, how I directed James Earl Jones doing a PSA. I have lots of wonderful stories, but again, how pertinent, how relevant is anything that I can tell you going to be when it comes to you looking for work? Um, because even now what's happening is, is I've got a guy, uh, he was one of the first people to do a League of Legends, a big event, and uh, he's kind of taken me under his wing and we are now working to turn all of my undiscovered fan base into followers on the internet. Uh, it's a process which is starting pretty soon. And uh, anyway, it's very interesting. And it's not something that I can tell other people to do because you, you haven't done voices for 300 video games. You don't have that kind of a base to work off of. Um, when I started, there were two publications uh, that they had a West Coast and East Coast or version, Ad World and Ad Week, and I used to, I put ads in there. I hadn't even uh, I had just barely gotten an agent, and I put ads in there that said thank you to the Bay Area to the California advertising community for making my job the greatest in the world. And I took out third of a page ads. The reason why I did that was I figured. They read, the people who hire me read these things. They would like an acknowledgement, my thanking them. And what schmuck takes out a third page ad if he isn't actually already working and doing lots of work and voiceover? Right. Making money that it can afford okay. a third of a page yeah, ad. It worked. I got work <laughs> off of it. I got a, a, a early national TV commercial uh, for a car, car company uh, off of it. And uh, it pay, paid for itself. I used to go to Moscone Center in San Francisco, which is a big facility with lots of trade shows. And I would take material and put it into hanging file folders and glue it to the restroom stall doors. I would bring muffins for the people who watched the door. I would go before the show started and said, hey, can I go downstairs and just leave some of these around? And they let me do it. Um, you know, that's old style guerrilla marketing. I was going to say that's kind of old marketing. school. Yeah. Um, I used to pick up the phone. There was a, 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 a publication that came out when the gaming industry started using voices called the Northern California Guide to Interactive, um, Interactive Video or something like that. And I would call people up and I'd say, hey, are you interested in talking to somebody who understands nonlinear um, uh, audio performances for video games? And they're like, how soon can you get here? So this is not pertinent to anybody's world today. It's not pertinent to my world anymore. And people say, well, JS, if you started doing voiceover now, how, what would you do? Um, <laughs> I have no idea. I probably would do voiceover. Yeah. But that's me again. Yeah. I don't know. It's yeah. hard to say was uh, I didn't, there wasn't really a choice of doing like cool coding and other stuff back then. I, and if I were, you know, 18 now, what I'd have a ponytail and probably tats everywhere. And you know, the big, the big piercings on the ear and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. That would probably be me uh, yeah. like, you know, 
Once again, we're talking with uh, J.S. Gilbert. Uh, we're going to take a quick break here. If you've got a question for J.S. about all this stuff, because we want to get into it a little bit more, uh, throw it in the chat room in Facebook. Throw it in the chat room in, in uh, YouTube. And if you've got a question on Clubhouse and would like to ask your question personally, live on our show, with your actual voice, right there on Clubhouse, you can do it. So we'll be right back with J.S. right after these words. Ooh, I think I heard the voice of a body shop. I did! I did hear the voice of a body shop. Beetle body shop. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Power 103.9. At Target, we want you to come as you are. Be comfortable. Uh, okay, maybe not bathrobe comfortable. Pants for the customer in aisle four, please. Nuevo México necesita un cambio. La representante Michelle Lujan Grisham ha luchado por nuestro estado en la Cámara de Representantes. Watch anywhere, anytime on an unlimited number of devices. Sign in with your Netflix account to watch instantly at Netflix.com. The ice cream maker is a big risk that can have huge rewards until you forget to turn it on. Well, that's it, guys. Time is up. Hey, it's JMC. Thanks for watching the voiceover body shop. If you're demo ready or looking to get there, check out jmcdemos.com and see a sample of our work. Now let's get back to Dan and George and this week's tech wisdom. Well, it looks like traveling is coming back into vogue and Harlan Hogan's Portabooth Pro and Plus make recording on the road a breeze. And in that spirit, here are some of Harlan's top tips for recording professional quality audio away from home in 2021. Number one, the motel ironing board. Practically every hotel and motel provides an ironing board in your room. But forget ironing. It's a perfect height adjustable stand for your Portabooth Pro or Portabooth Plus. Two, if you can, turn off the heat and the air conditioning. Three, switch off the fridge or mini bar. Four, request a room that's inherently quiet away from the vending machines. Harlan's been known to actually unplug them. After about 9 a.m., most hotel fitness centers are deserted. Here's a bonus tip. Use voice-optimized headphones and stay away from windows. Harlan has a whole bunch more tips for you VO road warriors. So check out voiceoveressentials.com before you check in and get your travel-friendly Portabooth Pro or Plus. Getting into VO is quite an accomplishment. And accomplishing anything in the world of performance can be really tough. Getting great information is tough. Getting the right advice and mentoring is tough. Simply getting ahead is tough. And the best way to get ahead is to simply get started. Let's make it simple. To get started in voiceover, the best way is with VO Hero's free online course, Getting Started in VoiceOver. You'll learn everything you need to know to create a successful, satisfying, and profitable voiceover career. The link is really simple. Here it is. VOHeroes.com forward slash start. Again, that's VOHeroes.com forward slash start. Get ahead in voiceover simply by getting started. Go to VOHeroes.com forward slash start. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. And we are back cowbell. with J.S. Cowbell. What? More cowbell? I don't know. Byron Wagner says more cowbell. So, what? <laughs> I was just thinking that. I was listening to Fear the Reaper the other day, and I'm like, it needs more cowbell. <laughs> No question about it. Uh, so, uh, again, if you've got a I question. I just want to say one thing. Please, Harlan go Hogan, uh, God bless him. He's uh, been uh, faithfully, uh, consistently supporting you guys, the voiceover industry. I met him, uh, uh, was in Chicago a few years ago, uh, went, to, went to lunch at one of his favorite places. It's uh, a Greek-owned uh, restaurant, and uh, we had a wonderful time. And uh, he gave me one of his hats, uh, VO hats. And uh, I gave him, I 
I don't know. I had, oh, you know, me and the swag. I don't have much swag anymore. But look no, I it have is. it all. It's all in drawers here. <laughs> there it is. Can you, can you. Commercialized I, character. I still use my J.S. Gilbert bottle opener. And yeah. here's a you know, when I, when I first got those tip, pens if you have... made, uh, there, were, there were purple pens. This one. This is the, oh, that's not it. Oh, well. But when I had uh, when I had them made, I went around to all the recording studios. There used to be like a hundred recording studios in the Bay Area, and I would just drop them all over. I would leave them in booths. I would just walk in, see an empty booth, and put a few of my pens in it or whatever. And I just remember there was like this one actor, and he was a pretty big name here. And he's like, "Ah, JS, you must be working all the time. I see your pens at like every studio." <laughs> And it, it takes a little bit of chutzpah to keep doing that kind of stuff. But yeah, do, do, you think, um, do you think that'll work today? I mean, I, you, we've got, it's, it's all social media sort of run these well, days. And, and the, the lucky thing is, is that perception trumps truth. And the, the, if you, but by the way, any of you people who are watching this now, and thank you all for joining us in clubhouse and, uh, and Facebook and whatever, and uh, please, uh, if there's anything I can do for you, uh, follow me or, you know, uh, buy me a cookie or whatever. Uh, I'll do my best. Uh, that's all I can do. But again, uh, if you're really looking to succeed, uh, find somebody who spent four, five, six, seven years on a voiceover career who is doing well or somewhat well. Um, and there are tons of those people out there. It's a totally different approach. For example, uh, there are people out there that say, I get booked off my demos all the time. Um, here's a thing that I will tell you. They're a liar. <laughs> Keep it They're simple. They're a liar. <laughs> they may get booked a few times, or if they are getting booked off their demos, then they're on Fiverr.com and they're working for Peanuts. Or they're in Australia. Or, well, that's possible. Yeah, they yeah. could be in Australia. I, yeah. in, exactly. England, Australia, a few other places still do things. But the th second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth year that I was in this business, typically because it was cassettes and you could not get agents to do free auditions for you, let alone contact somebody and ask them to record it at home. You had to pay a casting person to do an audition, and they, it cost you by the person. So typically, and this is not bragging or anything, I might work 150 to 200 jobs a year. Now, that's big and small. There are jobs that you do, even union jobs that pay like 400 bucks. It's, it depends. Uh, I was amazed I'm going to jump, but... I, when I go to speak and I tell people I did I did uh, five of the main characters from League of Legends, I'm um, Cho'Gath, Udyr, Gragas, Mundo, and Scion, the original Scion. And uh, um, they all think I'm like a, a movie star or something making millions of dollars from this. I did those five voices over a period of about six, seven years, and I think maybe I made about... Uh, 12 grand, 14 grand off of it. That was, that was it. So my two best commercials actually earned me more than all of the video games I've done voices for combined. Hmm. That's fascinating. Some things pay you a lot more than you think they should. And some things don't pay you as well as you think you pray, should. But pray that that business funny. model exists in five to 10 years. Yeah, That's really. Not it's going to change. change. What's that? Yeah. I don't think that business model is going to exist for for a terribly long time. Yeah, it it's always been kind of weird. But uh, what was I saying before I jumped off and I said that? I do that. I'm like a BB in a tin can. It helps if you have ADHD, actually. To be able to <laughs> or I believe. Um, or we can throw to some. Stay questions. off your meds. Just you know. Oh sure, look over oh, yeah. there. Yeah, we got we got a few questions here from our vast worldwide right, audience. Would you ahead. like to take a couple of those? Why George? the heck not? Let's see oh. if I can. George, what's uh, the, the first, first one is in our uh, chat audience on Facebook. This is from Grace Newton. 
Uh, she says, in the marketing portion of my training, I was taught to be consistent across all social media platforms. But I keep seeing people apologizing for cross-posting. What are your thoughts? Um, well, this is an interesting one. I, I think that having a consistent look and feel uh, across all of social media makes a lot of sense. Um, there is a thing called the Dunsbar number. You can look it up, D-U-N-S-B-A-R, Dunsbar number, Dunsbar limitation. He was a uh, sociologist, psychologist, and he made a determination that there is a finite number of intimate relationships that we can have, maybe 175 to 250. Now, Gen Y and Gen Z are doing a little better at that, but not uh, amazingly so. And so what happens is, is every single day when you wake up and Facebook tells you whose birthday it is, you say, who the hell is that? Um, we literally cannot keep track of the thousands and thousands of people that we interact with, even if it's just for a short while on social media. The algorithms keep changing. So who we see information from, how we relate to people, that's changing all the time. The APIs, which are the chunks of information that uh, apps and sites like Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn allow programmers and individuals to grab onto to get data, those are changing. They're getting tighter. Twitter is really good about it. We can get lots of information from Twitter and we can actually keep track. We can have heat maps in Twitter. We can see who we've had relationships with and stuff. LinkedIn, not so much. Facebook, pretty bad. So uh, I uh, suggest to people that they do uh, two things. One, you want to have a consistent avatar, a consistent logo, consistent color scheme. And um, the internet also hates people like me. They hate people that do 20 different things. Um, and it also has been a problem for me because what happens is, is if you Google my name, the first 40 pages that show up, not, pa not 40 items, but 40 pages that show up are pretty much all devoted to me doing voiceover. And most of that's a voiceover in games. Well, if I told you that I won awards doing advertising creative, if I told you that I won awards and helped companies make millions of dollars, IBM once had a picture of me on a dartboard at one of their divisions because I was uh, helping their competitor make a lot of money at their expense. And now I go out and I try and get work doing that or doing writing or whatever. Invariably, somebody's going to Google me and they are going to find pretty much all I do is voices for games. And well, who the hell is this guy? He's a voice guy. What, what is he trying to do telling me how to sell crap? And what is this guy trying to write for me? And da, 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 da. So, um, and I was trying to fight that for a while, but now yeah. I'm not. Now I'm going to go with the flow and I'm going to build up my social media presence, marketing myself to the more easily identifiable fan base that's out there and seeing what that does as far as my voiceover career. Yeah. Um, but it's important that your message be very, very concise. It be very, very clear. Um, and Aida, attention, interest, desire, and action. You hear it said all the time. Everybody, love, they want a story. Be a story. Nobody gives a damn about your story. What they want to be is entertained, amused. Do I amuse you? Do I make you laugh, Charlie? Am I a clown? Ha ha, Charlie. What? Or they want to be educated to a certain extent maybe educated enough so that they can impress their friends, make more money, whatever it might be. But the stories that you tell in social media have to involve people. They have to be, this is, and not everybody's a great storyteller. So you know what, then hire somebody who's a great storyteller and offer to do voiceover for free or clean their house or cook or whatever, whatever it is you can do that's going to offer a value proposition to them. Yeah, um, we got some. We, yeah, we've got some questions on Clubhouse too. Would George want to take that? Okay. Take those on. 
Yeah, we got Chris in the clubhouse. Fire away, Chris. Oh, thank you so much for the opportunity. I appreciate it. I'll make this brief. First of all, JS, um, I live in San Francisco. If you need a wheel, man, I mean, if you need a ride, let me know. <laughs> thank you, also, also uh, when it comes to uh, being a lawyer, somebody said if you represent yourself, you have a fool for a client. Is that the same case if you're going to try to write your own copy for your own demo? I, you know what? I'm sorry. I, uh, unless I turn up the audio on Clubhouse, I can't hear you. Why? Well, you should be able to hear him uh, through our feed because we can hear him so that you should really? be it's, able he's to He's coming through much, uh, much lower volume than you guys. I don't know why. Okay. For the moment, mute your clubhouse, JS, and let's have him answer the ask the question again. Okay, I mute, I mute your clubhouse. Yeah. Or turn it down. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Chris. Yes, yes. Is it best to hire someone to write your own copy or your copy for your own demo, or should you just wing it, or is that dangerous to do? Uh, yeah, no. Um, it's getting so much more competitive now that realistically, you have to have a great demo. It can't, it can't just be okay or good or show a variation of what you can do. It really needs to sound like real work that you would have been hired to do. And not just real work, but good quality work that if an ad agency person is listening to it or a voice uh, agent or somebody like that, that they're going to respect that. Um, and so that's, that's really important. And there's a problem. Uh, I was getting sent a lot of demos. I don't and much anymore because I don't really do production that much. But um, believe it or not, I got sent demos where people were doing spots where I was actually the voice actor that did the original spot. Hmm. Um, this happens a lot because people nowadays are getting, they're joining the online services, voice one, two, three, and Voices, we hate you, but give us your money anyway. You know those guys, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, so they go, oh, look at all these uh, uh, things that I've got. I can read them for demos or whatever. And um, it's it's actually, it's created a lot of issues, a lot of problems. Even, even represented talent uh, are getting NDAs. You have to sign before you get a, a script saying that you're not going to screw around with the script or show it to people or whatever. So... Yeah, I would say, and you know, uh, there are still professional recording studios out there with people who are recording people every day. Uh, that's a good place to go. Or uh, certainly George and, uh, and Dan, they know uh, tons of people uh, that do really good uh, recordings for uh, demos and things like that. Um, and I'm, I'm guessing that there are, there are, numerous price points depending on where you are in your career but uh uh everybody has to start off somewhere so Absolutely. if you you know if all you can come up with is the money to pay for 30 seconds it sounds really good do that yeah yeah cool. I, I, I yeah one of the things you wanted to mention is that what, because we were talking about social media it sounds like you're getting into the podcasting webcasting uh thing ah. tell us a little bit about that yeah, so downstairs, um, I have a, uh, so there's a couple of things that are going on. I mentioned that uh, there is a group that is kind of taking me in. And the idea here is we're taking undis an undiscovered fan base that I have. This is a weird sort of a thing that uh, I discovered seven years ago or eight years ago. A friend said, you have no idea how big uh, League of Legends or Twisted Metal or these other things. He said, watch. So we were walking down the street, and there was a Foot Locker, you know, that <clears throat> sells the sneakers. And he, he grabbed my arm, and we went inside, and there was a bunch of uh, young uh, teenage 20-somethings. And he said, hey, does anybody here play League? And they kind of turned around and went, yeah, yeah. And he, he's the voice of Mundo and Gragas and Sion and Cho'Goth and Udyr. And they're like, and he goes, here, give him a little. And I went. Mundo goes where Mundo pleases. Or, you know, I have been here 5,000 years. And they're like, oh. and all of a sudden, they all wanted to take their pictures with me. And, uh, oh, man, uh, could you sign an autograph? And, da, da, da. and it was a phenomenon. It was really, really a phenomenon. And I'm stupid because I should have jumped on it uh, then and uh, really uh, developed it. 
Uh, but I didn't because I was fighting it. And I was saying, oh, there's diminishing returns in voiceover and half of the clients that used to hire me to do union stuff are now non-union. They're paying a fraction. And, you know, I started getting into not the pity party, but the, you know, when you've been making a buck without having to work really hard at it, and now suddenly you've got to work harder at it, you look at the other things that you do that maybe can command a greater price. And that's what I was looking at. And it's been probably a good seven years that I've been fighting that. And so I finally do? around and said, you know what? Let's just go both feet back in again and, um, and do it. Um, what, what was the thing you asked, by the way, Dan? Not, <laughs> it was about your, your podcasting oh, and webcasting right. studios. It was part of that. Uh, I have a setup downstairs. So what I've got, where I am right now is this is a, a spare bedroom. I have a, a laptop here, um, a Logitech camera, a light, and a 42-inch monitor and, and so forth. So it's, it's fine for me to come up here and uh, hang out and be able to do some editing and whatnot. And uh, if uh, I'm doing stuff for um, uh, a night, night show that's recorded in New York now, uh, so a lot of times I have to get up at seven o'clock in the morning and do things. Um, so I, uh, I, there's a coat closet right there. There it is. And I open that up. I go in there. Uh, I use what's called a mixer face R4, which is made by Centrance. Oh, you finally got one. Like, <laughs> there's a story. <laughs> yeah, we won't get into that. Uh, <laughs> so um anyway yeah it only took me six six years to get them <laughs> i ordered i ordered three of them from these guys on uh on kickstarter and it took six years but they michael you know the commitment he he got it to me and they, they've actually been pretty nice to me good um, yeah yeah well js so, it, it, it has been a pleasure having you with us because thank we, you we don't talk nearly enough, and no. the pandemic. And is now the thing yeah. is, though, you have an even better guest. I understand coming up in in the second part, right? Well, else. I don't know if he's better, but you know, we'll find. No, out. no, no. Because me, I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm old. Yesterday's news. Yeah. Uh, but you got he's. Uh, what is that? He did Reefer Madness too. I really wanted to talk to him about that. But. Okay. Well, you'll get the chance one of these days. Anyway, Thank JS, you. thanks for being with us. If people want to get a hold of you, you or work. So with, where, where can they where can they find your your writings? Uh, and writings? You know, I'm at Gilbertism uh, in most things, uh, or just JS Gilbert. Um, yeah, it is, uh, I actually am paying attention to my Instagram account these days. You can find me there. I'm on Clubhouse. Uh, I do I do go into Clubhouse. Sometimes I can be uh, provoked into talking about voiceover. Um, yeah, I get the notifications all the time. How do you turn off the notifications on Clubhouse? Yeah, <laughs> of course, all you people living on Clubhouse don't want to hear that because you want to be in there. Anyway, thanks yeah, for being yeah, with me. I'll be going answers. down to Laguna Beach probably uh, in a few weeks, so I'll, uh, I'll let drop you by, know. say yeah. hi. All righty, yeah. we'll be right back right. right after this. Thanks, JS. Thanks to everybody. This is the Latin for Lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on the Voiceover Body Shop. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Hey, it's time to talk about Source Connect, the tool that you all need to have access to in your studios if you're playing 
with the big boys and girls because that is really what is still being used by many of the big studios and productions. Why? Because it's the tool that integrates directly with the systems that they're using. It works seamlessly with multi-track DAWs like Adobe Audition, Pro Tools, Logic, Nuendo. The systems they're using, this system on their side, Source Connect plugs directly in. The audio flows in right into the track and they get to move on to the next thing. Because you know what? In voiceover, you're a cog in a machine. Meaning, you're there to just facilitate something and make it as painless as possible for the production. That's your job. So having a tool like this that allows you to do that is what's going to really propel your, your clientele forward. You're, you're going to get a higher echelon of clients. And yes, it comes with also having an agent in most cases, but trust me, you want to have this tool available to you and you can get it on a subscription. You don't, it's not a big commitment to get started using Source Connect. Just Get up and running. If you need some help, I'm available. Go to georgethetech sc and you can see my training material. There's a video on there that gets you started, and it can get you running. Anyway, let me know. Let us know. If you found, uh, if you found yourself going to Source Elements and getting Source Connect, let them know that we sent you. They'd, we'd really appreciate it. And we'll be right back to wrap it up. Thanks. You're watching VOBS.TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese sandwich. Well, thanks again to J.S. Gilbert for, uh, for joining us and, you know, ex you know, sort of getting really into the meat of the matter of, uh, you know, some of the reality of voiceover uh, today, you know, as opposed to yesterday. And bringing his perspective. You know, Absolutely. As yeah, said, a unique like, perspective. I, I want to share with you what I know, but I know that what I know is on oftentimes maybe not so relevant to what you need to know. So sometimes knowing what you need to know and not need to know. Wait, does that make any sense? It doesn't. But the we fact know that, <laughs> the fact that he the <laughs> fact that you know we've had guests on, you know, that have been in the business for 30 years, and they're happy to to spout on about everything they know. And uh, half of that make is oftentimes not relevant because right. of when they started their career, you know? So right. anyway, it was cool having him on again. We've known him. Have we known him more than 10 years? Has to be. Uh, at least 10 years, as long yeah. as we've been doing this show or thereabouts anyway. Uh, by the way, next week on this very show, which we're about to go do live in case anybody is uh, still waiting around wanting to hear some Tech Talk, Tech Talk number 59 will be on next week. And then we're going to be uh, dark for July. But look, there are thousands of episodes of voiceover body shop that you could go back and watch <laughs> thousands and, of and, hours i would say well, thousands, sure. yeah i'm not actually shows i mean we're up to about eh, probably close to 500 now mr widom it's mm -hmm. uh, it's getting up there um so lots of uh, great stuff on uh, you know lots of great guests and lots of uh, lots of tech but we're going to get into that we got to re-rack for that uh, but we do need to thank those who help us uh, get this show done and those would be our donors of the week. Who do we have this week? Oh, we got some names that we've read before and a couple maybe we haven't. Uh, Christy Burns, Graham Spicer, Sandra Manwiller. That's a new one to That's me. That's a new one, yeah. Thank you for your donation. We appreciate it. Christopher Epperson, Sarah Borges, Philip Sapir, Thomas Pinto, Shelly Avellino, and Mar Natasha... Archevka. Very good. Nicely done. Nicely done. Uh, we also need to thank our wonderful sponsors. Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And JMC Demos. Uh, thanks to Jeff Holman in the chat room and Danny Burnside over at uh, Clubhouse. And our technical director, Sue Merlino, back after you know donating her son to us for a week. Uh, and, uh, of course, Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Well, that's going to do it for uh, VoiceOver Body Shop this week. We're going to rack it up for Tech Talk, so don't go anywhere if you're watching live. And uh, we'll be uh, here to help you out with your home voiceover studio. We've got some cool stuff we're going to talk about tonight as well. Uh, just remember, it's tough business. We're here to help. But really, it comes down to the fact of if it sounds good. It is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. E S. Yeah. Long button.